Chapter 22. 30 Years of Hangover. There's a bit of a cool story to this one. The year was 1980, and according to Wikipedia, lots of cool stuff was happening. It was a leap year that started on a Tuesday. Uh, Professor Longhair died. And um, the Mario boat lift ended, whatever that was. In amidst these truly earth-shattering events, though, I was born. And friends of my father decided to give this little bundle of something that occasionally resembled joy a big six-litre bottle of the finest red wine their brilliant vineyard could make. Yes, a giant bottle of great red that you can't usually buy in stores. That's why the 80s were truly the best decade ever. Because you got a bottle of wine the size of a 10-year-old when you were learning how to crawl, babble and poo yourself. The idea, of course, was to open the huge bottle up on the very day I turned 21. And when the day finally rolled around, it was a decent-sized celebration involving friends and family turning up to join in the festivities. Drink was drunk, food was consumed at a decent rate, even a cigar was half-smoked. I'm not a big smoker. But after the smoke and debris cleared, I realised that I'd left the oversized bottle at home. The celebratory red Taltani holy water would have to be drunk on another occasion. Flash forward nine years later, and I came to the amazing conclusion that still, even though I'd moved many a time and taken the giant bottle with me every single time, I still hadn't found the time or an event worthy of popping the cork. I'd even had it valued, and even the valuer suggested popping it open rather than attempting to sell it. So it stayed in the dark some more, doing not much in a dark corner of my cupboard until that fateful day in March when I figured that come hell or high water, that bottle would be opened on my 30th birthday. Would it be the finest product of the grape? Or would it be completely and utterly undrinkable and more effective as paint stripper? Plenty of people at the momentous event took a sample, and here were the results. Now, please note that I'm the furthest away from a wine expert that you can get. This was my dad's gig, and something he did ridiculously well. My notes are based on zero training and nothing intelligent whatsoever. First up, we've got the colour. Not the deep dark red as I'd hoped for. Even though it had spent most of its life on its side in a dark place at Dad's insistence, the colour really did take on the coppery aspect of blood. Real blood, not Hollywood blood. And seemed to have lost some of its viscosity. No sediment though, which was good. If it was scanned by a paint matching machine, it had probably come close to a glossy Mongolian deep rust. Or a big bottle of coke that's been a touch bleached by the sun. The smell. Ever opened a bottle of your grandma's port and have your nostrils assailed by the very strong smoothness? This smelt strongly of watered-down port mixed with some weak house red from a cheap and nasty Italian restaurant where you'd buy it in a big silver bag. This, of course, was nowhere near what I'd imagined a 30-year-old Cabernet Sauvignon to smell like. Not that I'd really know what it's supposed to smell like after 30 years, but surely not like this. I'd attempt to list the scents a la half-decent wine writers, but I couldn't tell you if it had vague hints of tobacco or banana leaf or chocolate or anything. It just didn't smell like it probably should have. The cork. Like a mangled car wreck toasted in fire and then doused in soothing fortified wine directly after. It didn't pop out, more so rotted out. No need for an oversized bottle opener when your girlfriend, now my wife, can slide out a very giant cork with her fingernails. This cork had obviously had a very tough life and was probably very thankful it finally came up for air. It's never a good sign when something that's supposed to be sealing the contents of a bottle slides out smoother than Teflon. The taste. First sip and instantly the thought was, wait, this doesn't taste like cab sap at all. Upon the second sip, hey, it tastes more like watered down port. And the third sip netted me the, wow, this thing didn't mature, it fortified itself. Is this possible? I have no idea whatsoever. Do I look like a wine specialist? But that's what it tasted like. Imagine if a fortified port went to a gym with no warm-up whatsoever and proceeded to beat the hell out of itself for a few hours, then had a strength test, which it failed miserably. Think rookie port made in someone's shed that's lacking in strength, smoothness, and the warming effect that really makes it enjoyable. I was drinking Port BC, a self-created experiment that really didn't bear any of the fruit namely tasty grapes, that I wanted. The after effect. Like a night on the garlic pizza with an uncle who simply won't go home no matter how loud and embarrassing he gets after having a few, this thing lingered like nothing else I'd ever seen. The watered down flavour stayed around my mouth for a very long time, and rather than being memorable, it seemed to linger worse as time went on. It started as an okay sensation, but then seemed to age around my gums during the ad breaks. 
Maybe it's like if you drink from the wrong Holy Grail in an Indiana Jones film. This stuff aged a billion years in a few moments. The longer it aired, the worse it got, to the point of vinegar. And then 20 minutes later, the headache arrived. The hangover had begun before I'd even gone to bed. Not what I usually expect from a glass of red. To be honest, I wasn't expecting much from this. I knew the coin would fall one of two ways, brilliantly or completely undrinkable. Well, technically you can drink it, but A, you'll want to drink it quickly before the air puts it in a nursing home, and B, you wouldn't want to throw it back in the closet for another 30 years or so because there's no chance in wine hell that this will get better than where it is now. And of course, the question remains, what the hell am I going to do now with five and a half litres of watered down port? Quick update, I ended up pouring what was left on the grass out the back, magically killing the weeds there and pretty much everything else. While the thought of keeping the bottle around for another 30 years could be amusing, it really didn't serve any further purpose being in a dark cupboard for the rest of its life. So I found an ex-employee of a local vineyard and donated it to her bottle collection. It's taken pride of place next to some 70s bottles and what I can only assume is a jug of moonshine, which probably tasted better than this wine did.